Hey everybody, and welcome back to our Donkey Kong 64 commentary. Uh, we sp we took a bit of a break in between the last part of this one because uh, DK was too scared to go inside the uh, creepy looking uh, toy shack here. You say toy shack? This is the art. This is the villain's like main lair. This should be like the last level. I mean, yeah, it does. Ha it does have all the all the um, necessary bits that make an evil lair an evil lair. But they decided to make it the third level of the game, or the fourth if you decide to be stupid. Yeah. Aw, uh, while K. rules out, his dog watches TV. Yeah. Uh, oh boy, I love this show. Monkey go playing around with the Kremlin crooks. Hey, catch me if you can. <laughs> what the? Hey, this kid's quick. What's that thing on his back? Fire. Fire? Do, do, do. Oh. Here's your chance. <laughs> now, and just like that, they both hit themselves on the head with a coconut. I mean, that's what I assume happened. So, really neat, uh, moody music. So, Frantic Factory, another de facto example of uh, Rare totally acing it in the whole intimidating level factor. Help me, Chunky No Lack Heights. Aw, Chunky. And it's also here where we'll find our last member of the DK crew. Uh, hope he doesn't mind dangling up there for the next two parts or so. I do, actually. Because this is still one of the, uh, I don't want to say one of the worst levels, or like the most, the you know, the worst offenders of it, but this level definitely is going to have some, you know, traipsing around to collect, to get everything we can with each Kong. For what it's worth, though, I'd also say that this is probably one of the better levels in the game. Just, again, the, the, the spooky atmosphere of it is a big turning on point, and it also hosts some of the more interesting missions in the game. I know it. Thank God we finally found it. Grunty Industries done right. Uh, pretty much, yeah. About time, because usually rare when they usually rare collectathons with their industrial levels are usually just pains in the asses between this and Rusty Bucket Bay. Yeah, like this one. This one feels the most balanced between all of them. It's not too. It's it's spacious, but not too too spacious. And I mean, again, it's just. I don't know, maybe it's just the cells you're talking about. I always had a, soft, a very big soft spot for this level. It's, I, think it, I think it keeps focus nice. Like, okay, Rusty Bucket Bay, it's easy to get lost and not know where to go because of how open it is with, you know, many hazards throughout. And with Witchy Industry, with Grunty Industries, it's just, there's too much that you can't even tell where to even start half the time. So I think it's like, it's just basically not too big. And unfortunately, we lose out on the moody impact of, oh, jeez. Unfortunately, we lose out on the moody impact since uh, Celia is no longer recording this during a thunderstorm, which will <laughs> build for good atmosphere. That's true. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm still here. Hey, yes, Celia, what do you think? What do you think of e what do you think of to like evil toy factories? Yeah. Uh, I can't. Oh, geez. Oh, geez. That was the wrong pad. Anyway, continue. <laughs> I can't remember if I had any experience <gasps> with video games. I mean, yeah, that's what I think about. It's not exactly a trope that you'd find too often. Like, you, like maybe in platformers, but other than that, like, Frantic Factory is the first level that immediately comes to mind. I mean, I hate, I really hate to say this, but it kind of reminds me of, oh, jeez, of, uh, of the Bomb Factory in the ROM hack Master of Time. Ugh. Hey, I didn't know they still had those around. That's a DK console. Or cabinet, I mean. But unfortunately, Donkey Kong does not know how to pull. Yeah, that's... I don't, okay. I, you think be... it's a very simple, like, concept, but... I mean, yeah, no, it's it's so weird because, like... A natural thing about DK's character is how strong he is, but it's like... The fact that in this game, you actually have to, again, as per the norm, ask Cranky to help you learn how to pull switches is silly. Also, he's not a very good shot. It's not really obvious. I was gonna say, are those coconuts even do anything? Can't you just like jump up and punch the balloon? I'd love that. That'd be great, but you can't do that. It's probably the balloons. You can only you can only shoot at them with your coconut gun or whatever else the other Kongs have. Was that you causing that racket out there? <laughs> you almost oh, hit me. Coconuts. You almost hit me in the head with one of those. Uh, I plead the fifth. You don't even know what the fifth is. I know what it is. It was a really good movie. That's Fifth Element, young whippersnapper. Oh, that was a good movie. But now, so that old wise 
con artist Cranky Kong just charged us seven bucks to learn how to pull. Yep. And uh, also, the candy Candy's uh, music shop is right next door. In case you, well, are you're still missing any of the instruments with the other Kongs, most especially you know the one dangling on the up on that cage. Yeah, yeah, but unfortunately, we need a funky shack if we want to try and we need a funky shack to get that balloon and reload. Yeah, so that balloon's gonna have to wait. Fine, fine. But in the meanwhile, we could press on this switch and open up another pathway back at the start. Okay, awesome. Again, like I like I like this. I like that the whole place is opening up and you know what? I think yeah, again, war the I I, I guess it did start with Banjo Tooie before everything else, but the whole warp pad thing really is what helps make a collectathon like feel nice and approachable. They did it, mm -hmm. Mario Odyssey of course did it. Like it just is it's nice and uh oh, we have ourselves a little uh, employee break room. Yep, for the sweaty the sweaty workers of a uh, frantic factory, uh, play the, play a good old round of Donkey Kong on the Wednesdays. The game that Nintendo wishes it owned. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's true. So, in between sessions, we actually learned that the original code for Donkey Kong, the arcade game anyway, does not technically belong to them. It belonged to a, di a completely different company, which uh, Future Me will probably post right around here. Uh, and that's partially the reason why future re-releases of Donkey Kong was primarily with the NES release. Yeah, so that's why um, whenever they try to port this arcade version, like, or I should say that's why it's been very difficult for them to port this arcade version, and honestly now- uh, it's a classic! And honestly, now I, now I think about it, I wonder if this is why they were- Real talk, I wonder if this was why it was so much- it was so easy, or seemingly easy, for Adam Sandler to reference this in Pixels. I mean, there's a possibility, but, um, so uh, let's talk about Don Donkey Kong's inclusion in Donkey Kong 64 real quick. I mean, he's the, he's the first member of the DK crew, he collects yellow bananas. Okay, no, I'm joking. Uh, the Donkey Kong arcade game in general, it's... Okay, so if you want to beat the game, like, Donkey Kong 64 as a whole, you need to beat this twice. So, like... Yeah, because what's gonna... And the worst part is, for the sake of Donkey Kong 64, they force you to play with only one life. One life, you got one life to be all 100 meters, and as James is putting it, yes, we do have to do this twice because you do this once to get a golden banana, but then you need to get the bonus reward, which is required, which the game doesn't tell you is required until, you know, you're at the very. No! Oh. My leg! Oh, that's right! I can't survive heights for some reason. Yep, we had fall damage back then, and, uh,. I don't care how many high scores you have, James. You gotta, you you gotta get back in there. Well, I will just as soon as I input my name. <laughs> DK Junior. Oh, cause canonically. Mm, I mean, it was junior. it was it was technically canonical with the uh, rare with the rare cannon. I mean, I don't think they they follow that follow up on that in these days. But you know, I I like the idea that the DK that we know we've known with the necktie for all these years was you know just Junior gr grown up. I mean, it's not actually, like they ever used Junior much for anything else. Actually, that's something I want to ask. Like, so they made it canonical that. Oh, I'm trying to say. If I recall correctly, in Donkey Kong Country Returns, they kind of changed it up where apparently Cranky is actually his grandpa instead of his regular dad. Uh, yeah. Fine. Oh, geez, careful. I mean, that's how it is now. Which, uh, and uh, and it's also like these days they don't really acknowledge the fact that Cranky was meant to be the original Donkey Kong, well past his prime. Right. I wonder if um. I was gonna say, I wonder if, um, I, did this come out before Super Donkey Kong? I yes. Donkey, Donkey Kong. Super Donkey Kong? You mean Donkey Kong Country? No, I, I, he means the Game Boy game. Oh, Donkey Kong 94. Uh, yes, uh, Donkey Kong 64 came out, uh, after that. Oh, I was gonna say, I'm surprised they didn't do anything to reference that and how, like, massive he got at one point. Ugh, that would be, that would be pretty cool. <laughs> But, I mean, granted, they, they already saved that for uh, Chunky Kong, but that's something we True. can get to later. Anyway, what two pegs left? Uh, I still- I, I think we already asked this during the bit- our Donkey Kong 94, uh, thing, but I guess I'll ask Sealy, like, just- I mean, we're doing it right now. Did you ever play the, uh, our old arcade Donkey Kong? A long time ago. <laughs> well, there we Back go. to the circus with you! Whoa. I wonder if they- have they, have they not added the NES? Port of it to uh to the Not NES Online yet? 
Yeah, they have the, the well, NES online app. Yeah, they have. Okay, thank. I just want. Okay, just want to make sure. Just, I, I honestly, I can't think of any. I can't think of any Nintendo branded game that isn't on that service anymore. Like I think they covered it all. Yeah. Now, as far as Super Nintendo is concerned, that's a different story. All right, that was good, DK. Oh, okay, okay. Wow, you're a, you're a real pro, DK. Okay. Now, how about we how about we charge? Ch yeah, what am I trying to say here? Let's make it more difficult for you for the sake of beating the game. Double or nothing. But um, and, and and yeah, okay. So my apologies. The game does inform you. Hey, get back in there because uh, there is now a optional, not optional reward needed. Yeah, no, it's it's completely again mandatory. You gotta do this. And <laughs> they just superimpose oh. <laughs> an N64 coins right on top of Pauline. Sorry, Pauline. We're after you. <laughs> it's just, I mean, right there as we just saw right there, they clearly just slapped the sprite work over the entire screen, and that's it. And what you're not what you're not seeing here is that what we're actually playing is a lo is the lo long lost sequel where after Pauline dumped Mario for you know being for mayorhood I guess Mario found new love in a trash lid that he just <laughs> dumped, he just he just drew the N64 logo on top of and called his, his new girlfriend. I I want to say to at least be somewhat kind. Nope. It's what is, why does it say L equals zero two in the upper right? Oh, that's 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 uh, that's supposed to signify like what level you're on. Like what we were dealing with earlier was level one, where now we're dealing with like level two. Basically, in terms oh, of right. it, it's it's a difficulty thing. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, see, and I have to play the more difficult version. Ah, nuts! This is gonna. I I remember when I was playing this game like casually on Wii U. This was a di I had. <laughs> Well, it's just because there's no, like, secret trick. It's just get good at the arcade title. Yeah, and again, the biggest thing about... The, the biggest thing about this is that they expect you to do a one-life run, which... No, you don't need to go and do that. No, you the game was already just, hard enough with all, with the three lives the game gave you. You could have just literally given you just the ROM and, hey, or just do it in three lives. I can do that. I, I've gotten the high score on this game a few times when I have, like, oh, all the lives to <laughs> I mean, it should also go without saying that you t technically can unlock uh, Donkey Kong Arcade for the sake of, you know, just playing outside of the game. Oh, I and forgot how disturbing that help sound was. Yeah, that <laughs> <laughs> yeah continue. <laughs> but, um, no, like, uh, through the Banana Fairies, you can unlock DK Ar the original DK Arcade, like, to play at the bo in the bonus mode. And they actually do give you all the lines uh -oh. that, you know, should have been oh. in this. Yeah, which... I mean, I'm glad they have it put somewhere. Honestly, they, I, I do like all the little bonus things that Rare usually put into their games. This, uh, Banjo-Tooie, Conquer. They usually had a lot of, like, neat little multiplayer things included, just as a bonus. If not multiplayer, then just, you know, fun little Easter eggs entirely. Like, and not even just with Donkey Kong. There's another arcade game that uh, they didn't put in, in DK64 that we'll ha also have to touch on later, because that required... Yeah, no, the jackhammers get really freaking fast in level two. <laughs> and it's like it's it's pretty much all or nothing, and if you make one wrong move, that's pretty much <laughs> it. Wow. Yeah, that that part always there is usually where I, I I usually choke. But here we go. We finally have almost made it, I think. Or does this or is this the part where they toss in one twenty five on you? No, that, no, I don't think okay. they've never done that. And I mean, you know, now that's not the thing about it, that would be something else if. You know, say if Nintendo actually cared enough, they could give us a, the next big successor to Mario vs. Donkey Kong and try something like that. Did we ever? I don't. I don't think we ever did anything for March of the Minis, did we? I know we did one for the Amiibo Festival thing. Uh, yeah, we did. We didn't do anything for March of the Minis. Okay, nice. Because yeah, I remember playing that game a lot, and like I think I beat that one hundred percent. Yeah, that was that was a fun one to play. I mean, it's good for what it is. I just hate the fact that that's pretty much where that series stuck afterwards. Like, they never, ever went back to the uh -oh. classic gameplay of Donkey Kong. Ouch. <laughs> Twice. Twice in one day. Now then, why don't you and I spend a lovely afternoon at the arcade? <laughs> My treat? I'm a trash lid. Alright, so with that all said and done, that's pretty much it for Donkey Kong Arcade. And DK gets a shiny coin in the process. Oh, not Nintendo. banana. Nintendo. Nintendo. I can't eat this. You know who you just reminded uh, me of, Logan? What, what uh, did you remind me? 
uh, Bananas Gorilla from Richard Scary. Oh, jeez, uh, that that takes me back. <laughs> yeah, seriously, like I that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. It's it's that and Loli is the other name I think of out of nowhere. Yeah, Loli. The worm who has yep. a freaking like rich. How you doing, okay up there? <laughs> hey, he has a rich that's, what now? Uh, he, Loli, the freaking goddamn worm, owns this rich ass Apple helicopter that nobody questions. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thinks he's so high and it, mighty just because. Is okay, it so it's a car or a helicopter or both? <laughs> Fooey on old K. Wooly. Anyway, it's a K. Wooly. So, I don't know where that came from. So, uh, so now we're so now we're to while we fight these mechanized buzzers. Oh jeez. Well, we're heading on up because we did unlock that unlock this pathway earlier. Oh that oh yeah that's right the switch we ground pounded. Let's see. Uh, hi, how are you doing? I'm all right, I guess. Did you Ooh. ever like? Did you ever play much of the old arcade DK? I did once. I don't know if I've ever been all four levels before. I yeah, I don't recall. Yeah, the most I do is I think I played it once, and I think I forget if the. It's actually been so long since I played it. I forgot it. Come on, you can. <laughs> Get it's off like the devil dance it's, hole. It's like this pole. It's like this pole has some sort of attachment towards me. But yeah, I forgot if the way the game worked was that, like, you had to, like, after you beat the game once, it immediately, like, starts a new game plus, and that's when, like, things bump up to level two and so on. I believe that's how it is. Also, it's weird that with the, uh, with the NES port, they had to scrap the, uh, what people like to call the Pi conveyor belt. Oh, huh. that, oh yeah, that's right, that frickin' th that Those were pies this whole time, dumping into the fire? I thought they were... No, like I, th I think they're supposed to be, like, trays of cement. Okay, okay, because I, I mean, they did look like cream pies to me, but I always felt, I always fig I figured, like, it has to be, like, something else, like, freaking banana bunches or something. Oh, thank God. I didn't me. know they served pies at these construction sites. They don't. Eh, <laughs> it wasn't. I don't know that came Now, there's a pie gag that would go horribly wrong. <laughs> I saw this really fun, like... I mean, fun for the wrong reasons, but it was fun. It was interesting. This interesting, like, educational video talking about, um, uh, freaking, uh, talking about, like, all the times that the, uh, Three Stooges legitimately hurt them. Jeez, freaking hell. All the times that the Three Stooges legitimately hurt themselves during their stunts. Well, yeah, considering, I mean, I I'd imagine, like, considering how many episodes, like, how many shows they had to put on, I'd imagine there'd be, it'd be a couple of accidents. Well, it's like, did we get it? No. Nope. What? Nope. It's, it, it's in front. It's very finicky, trust me. There. We don't even see here in that one, but fuck it. Anyway. I mean, all of that, the pixie dust is enough proof. Okay. I hope. But uh, it was, um, yeah, like, just things like, like, they had stunts usually planned out, but it would usually be things like, Oh, like, there's this one part where the table's supposed to fall down, and, uh... Oh, Come on! What, uh, which, what was the name of the three... What was the name of the stooge with the, like, straight black hair? Is that... Uh, Mo. Mo, Mo. And Mo was supposed to fall off of... Fall down from it, and he actually fell so hard on his side that he broke two ribs. Oh! Yeah. But... He continued the... But he basically... But for the sake of the shot, he picked himself back up and continued the shot. And there's a part right after that where you can tell they, like, quickly shifted camera perspectives. Yeah, be careful with the six and the nine there. Yeah. Um, and, like, there's a part where, like, you can tell that the camera quickly shifted to a different, like, angle, thus proving they had to do a second shot. But he still kept it going for, like, another 10 to 15 seconds. And then, supposedly, like, off screen, he just literally passed out. And they had to, and he had to go to the hospital before returning the same day to finish the shot. I mean, like, those guys gave their lives to this. Did you hear what happened to a Leonardo DiCaprio in one movie? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. You're talking about that Django Unchained? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. It was a there's a super intense scene where like he, there's like a big confrontation between him, the main characters, and the, and over the main character's wife, and he's trying to like call order to the fact that there's this whole rowdiness, and in doing so, he slams his hand down and actually slams it on top of a like champagne glass, oh. and breaks it on the table, and it actually starts causing his hand to bleed because you know he just slammed it on glass and he <laughs> kept the scene going for like another five minutes. Yeah, no, like... He yeah, was, that was real blood. Yeah. It's Which, like, 
uh, props to him for, you know, keeping up the act, despite, you know, it being, you know, I'm pretty sure that was not intentional. Oh, oh no, yeah. not, of course oh, not. It oh, was... yeah, d and that brings me to another, did you hear what happened with uh, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind? Uh, is that the one with Jim Carrey in it? Jim Carrey and Kate Winslet. I have not seen that yet, and all oh, toy sales are down. So I can't remember yeah. what scene it was exactly, but it got to a point where uh, Kate Winslet was pushed so hard she passed, she fainted off screen, and Jim Carrey was livid. Wait, like, Ugh. like livid at whoever pushed her, or livid because he pushed her accidentally, uh, or livid because they weren't giving her a break? Oh, yeah, no, he's super considerate from what I've seen and heard. Yeah. I mean, considering, considering how much he and um, Ben Schwartz yuck it up as Sonic and Eggman, I'd hope so. Oh, I, I never did ask. Oh, nice, like, another arena time. I never did ask about that. Did they ever do, like, a Twitter takeover thing? Not yeah. yet, and I don't, I don't know if they will. Like, I would love that. I mean, I, I'd love to see that, especially now that things are starting to shift with the uh, Sonic VO like, uh, staff, but otherwise... Right, and, and, like, and with Sonic 2 on the horizon. Yeah, it's going to be coming out at the time of recording next year. Yep. So, Wait, continue. Um, <laughs> well. for a scene in which the couple climbs all the way back into Joel's babyhood of memory of being bathed in the sink, Carrie and Winslow had to sit in a giant tub for several hours. At one point, Whoa. Winslow actually fainted. Gondry wanted to keep filming, which made Carrie furious. People's nerves get frayed. My Michael was going, shoot, shoot, and she was going, I'm nauseous. And I am got angry because she was not- Oh, oh fuck no! no! Oh. Sorry, Celie, we fell. Hmm. Gonna have to do that again. <laughs> I love all these guys. And I love these guys. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get. Where'd he go? And the the director said, uh, Carrie was so mad. He thought my things get violent. He asked to start. Are you going to punch me in the face? Oh shit. Damn. That I is... mean, that's just the sins. That's just the sins of the cinema industry. Yeah. yeah. Was wasn't that like a huge? Wasn't that like a like common rumor and or like proven fact that like. Way back when, for Wizard of Oz, they, like, had Dorothy, like, coked up in order to keep her, uh, like, awake and stuff in order uh, to do what? all those Not only shoots. that, but diet pills to keep her thin. Yeah. Like, Jesus Christ. And the, and the, don't even get me started on how much the munchkins molested her. What? Jeez, I didn't know about that part. <laughs> I didn't know about either part. Yeah, childhood ruined. The only part I knew is that, bear in mind, this is during the time when Coca-Cola did use cocaine in it. That's yeah, true. That's that true. very true. I forgot about that. I mean, it's in the name. But back in these days, like, back in those days, like, Hollywood was a much different, like, beast. And yeah, at one point, oh, we're here. And at one point, they, uh, make sure you shoot this. Nice. Don't worry, I, I may be a shit shot, but I'm not that shit of a shot. <laughs> you got it. If, if it's of any consolation, though, you know the only cast member who was nice to her? Who? The Wake of Witch of the West. <laughs> you know what? Ironic. I had a feeling that... that I mean... Margaret I, Hamilton. I, I know it's like... And, 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 and real quick, was she also the one who played the teacher in the intro? Who, like, uh, almost ran over, like, Tr Toto in the, on her bike and... Like, yeah, was it actually was... the same actress? Okay. Yeah, that was her. Okay. Auto production. Oh, cool. That big machine must be running now. Uh, yeah, pretty much. It, there was more also... Or less a... Go ahead. There was also one where, um, when the Cowardly Lion made his debut in the scene, um, Judy Garland was laughing so hard, the director actually went up and slapped her across the face. Ugh. Because she couldn't stop laughing. Jeez. Yeah, like I said, a whole nother beast back then, which we've moved past that now. Now we just get kind of middling Wizard of Oz sequels with James yep. Franco. <laughs> or prequels, I suppose that one was instead. Anywho. Now that so, we. Oh, <laughs> bye, Chunky. Bye, Chunky. Oh. Oh. Chunky, Ch Ch you can't say. Chunky, you can't say DK no try. <laughs> DK made honest to God effort. <laughs> DK <laughs> make honest living. DK no get pulled into Chunky schemes anymore. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, I was just think of Chunky being the freaking like, Eddie of the bunch. Like, just quit By the way, we're going it. straight to the what source the? of this machine. Oh boy. Oh my god. Yeah, no, uh, it's it's a literal hellhole in there, which is why they gave us Super Kong on standby. Wonder yeah, it's basically Wonder Wing. We, we are invincible now because, uh, lo look at this. <laughs> how does How is a mortal monkey supposed to survive any of this? Is that, a one hit, is that a one hit KO if you... If we... Oh yeah. I, I'd imagine if not a one hit KO, like, just 
It's moving so there's been no surviving. It's like they they made it intentionally bullshit so that you can actually use a thing that gets through bullshit. And bear in mind, we still have to come back here for that balloon later. I mean, you don't have to, but it would be convenient. Yeah, fair. So I guess with that said, all said and done, DK is pretty much he's pretty much at it with this really bad toy factory regulations and fucks right off. Yes. Yeah, so. <laughs> However, he couldn't quite convince Diddy about the cruelties of the to of the uh, toy making industry, and so. Well, next time, Diddy's gonna go straight in, straight into the source and re see the dark truth for himself. Of industrialization. Hey. Till next time, everybody. Bye, bye. I'm tempted to make a Chucky joke, but I'm not clever enough to think of a good quote.